is when they really do want to get start getting leaner, they start just taking everything out. And they go, right, okay, I'll just be really restrictive and I'm going to start eating. You know, when I, when, I give cl- when I give clients on Program 10, you know, calories, outline their calories at the start of the course. And I say, right, okay, for a female, I'm not saying all females, I'm just giving you examples here, but you're gonna, your starting calories are going to be on 1850, 2000 calories, 2400 calories for, you know, some, some people. Um, they shit their pants. They shit the pants because most of the dieting methods they've done have been 1200, 1400. And they think, oh, I'm not going to lose weight on 18, 50, 2,000. Yeah, you are. You are if you're consistent with that. And there's more highly likelihood that you're going to be consistent with that because you can actually stick to it for long periods of time. You can actually fa- factor these things in. You can potentially, I know you boys probably use this with your clients as well, is you can actually use banking methods of calories as well. So you can go lower in the week, say 16, 1,700, where it's not that difficult to actually stick to. And then on weekends, have you've a got a bit of a splurge, more flexibility. Yeah, have a bit of a splurge, yeah. But yeah. like we've said before, flexibility still needs to be controlled because when we start eating KFC, yeah. After training, yeah. calories are going to go through the roof. The other they... thing as well, though, is is if you start too low, there's nowhere to go. 100%. So if you start at 1,400 calories, yeah, you're going to have a big impact. You're going to lose weight. It's going to be hard to stick to, but some people can. Yeah. They lose weight and then they hit that plateau. And then when they hit that plateau, what, there's nowhere to fucking yeah, go yeah. from that point. And then that's what they don't understand. Yeah. I do that with my, especially, especially new clients. I say to them, oh, we're going to start off quite high on your calories. And they're like, what? That's more than I'm normal. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. more than I eat now. And I'm like... But it's a quality of calorie. It's when you're eating. It's it's uh, yeah. you know etc. And then I say to them, as we taper, it's not like it's, it, it, we got to keep going down. Yeah, you yeah. know, we got to keep moving. We got to keep going down. And then we will eventually hit a fairly low calorie point. Yeah, yeah. depending on but their goals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But again, that that might take a year. Yeah, yeah. Depending on how big they yeah, are yeah. and where and also you want to keep all, all, yeah for for sure you want to keep all these tools. I, I call them tools like with yeah. steps, cardio, training calories you want to keep all these tools in the back pocket and implement them when, when you can yeah when needed and also as we know like yes you might you might get a client that will adhere to low calories for a certain amount of time because they're motivated yeah. motivation comes and goes so they're not going to stick to it when they're not motivated and secondly when they do plateau they're going to sack it off straight away because it's too hard because they've got no motivation there and also what people need to buy into with changing their physique and actually progressing their physique is actually having fuel available like you cannot train hard for a sustained period of time on 1400 calories, on 1200 calories. You know, you cannot do that. So your body, yes, you're going to lose weight. You're going to see numbers on the scales go down, but physically and your physique will actually look worse. And obviously long-term it'll look worse because you will, you will go through the backlash afterwards. 100%. That's always what happens. And like I said to you guys before we went live is, is, I never talk to a client about how good a diet is when they're on it because when they're on it, they tend to be losing lots of weight and they're like, oh yeah, I'm doing Slimming World, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on no carbs, I'm on cabbage diets or whatever. They lose a lot of weight on it. I always ask clients, how was that diet a month after you finished the diet? Mm-hmm. Like, have you actually kept most of the weight off? I'm not saying you should keep all the weight off because obviously, you know, there's, there's, you should go through phases. It's really weird you say that. One of my clients recently lost 10 stone and the only reason I... We, we, it was in the paper yesterday and stuff like that. But the only reason I didn't go to the paper sooner is because I, when he lost the 10 stone, we were, I wanted to stabilize his metabolism for a while. Yeah. So he lost that a few months ago. But since then, we've been up in his calories, making sure he's training right. And he's now like at a point where I'd say his calories are back up. He's feeling a lot better in himself. Yeah. And he's kept the weight off. Whereas what I was worried about, because we was in a calorie deficit mm-hmm. for so long, you know, and keep, kept increasing. And, you know, we had highs and lows throughout that. But I didn't want him to get to that point where, you know, we, oh, he's lost this much weight. Yeah, and then, well done. And then, well done, bang. And he puts two stone back on. And that's why I was really conscious with him. You know, I was yeah. really like, let's just nice and easy. That's, keep that's it at that coaching. point. And then, then I went to the paper and I said, look, he's done this fantastic thing because I just didn't want him to be demotivated yeah, yeah. by then losing all that weight and then putting it back on. Yeah, I think the reverse dieting is is something that's so, so key, isn't it? To sustainability. Yeah. And it's typically what the research shows is where people go on a, put a harsh diet and they're not coached or taught how to reverse out to maintenance yes. and it just all goes back. Yeah, so we, we talk about that a lot and that's that's probably the, the biggest part of the coaching process as well. It's like, it's all well and good getting the result, but actually keeping the result is something completely different. So getting a transformation is one thing, keeping the transformation is something completely different. Mm-hmm. And if you can get a client to buy into that progressive phase, like you will change their life yeah. in so many other aspects because you can increase calories where they're confident to actually consume. So say, for example, your friend who's lost 10 stone was on, I'm giving examples here and you can cut, but say if he finished on 2000 calories 
may have been a bit higher, but say if he finished on 2,000 calories, you know, if he's lost that amount of weight, obviously depending on how long he's lost it over, you could probably put, get him up to eating 3,000 plus calories a day over a progressive period. And over that progressive period, his training's going to improve, physique's going to improve, energy levels are going to improve. And you know what? He'll probably actually still lose weight because he's just he's just merging that deficit in towards maintenance. Mm -hmm. And what tends to happen, like a lot of people, you know, scientists and other coaches might go, well, just go back to maintenance. It's not just as simple as that. No, no because, it's definitely not. Because clients will shit their pants. Mm -hmm. If you said, right, you're going to increase your calories exactly by 30%. What I was about to say, yeah, he was shit in his pants. Yeah, yeah. You're going to increase your calories. Right? You finished on 2,000, you're going to increase your calories by 30%. That's going to take you up to 2, 6 straight away. Like, he, we know he's probably still going to lose weight on that if he's still accurate with his login. However, the reality is, psychologically, he's going to go through a bit like, oh, I, hang on a minute. I've been dieting for the last two years, losing 10 stone, which is amazing, by the way, or three years or five years or whatever. Yeah. But let's, you know, they they don't understand it at that point and that's down to the coaching process and if you can get a client to buy into that progressive phase it makes such a difference and and that's what we try and do on p10 as well a lot of the time is yes we get the result with the 10 weeks hopefully it might be slower than other processes but at least at the end of it you go actually i kept it off and actually i'm looking more down the route of not just watching the scales i'm looking down the route of actually i feel so much better more confident I look better, you know, training harder at ETC, you know.